Welcome back to our van plan. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at our upper cabinets. We've got the space um, in the ceiling here where the upper cabinets are gonna fit above the kitchen and then over the back um, at the end of the bed, um, both built in the same way. The plan is to use some one by two to build the frame at the front here so that we can screw that up into the ceiling at these points. We'll then have 12 mil ply running to the back here with another tw uh, one by two for the back attachment. Um, then we'll have 12mm ply ends and middle pieces that need to be scribed to the angles and the shape of the van. And then finally we've obviously got our um, fairly chunky wood in the back here um, and I'd really like to try and fix the cabinets at their main anchor point into this point here. So therefore I'm going to need to build some kind of baton running across here at the right angle in the right place to allow us to hold the whole thing up like that, so let's go. So the first thing to think about is the width of the entire um, upper cabinet. So we've obviously got to, can only go as far as around about here um, before we get to the rest of the ceiling or where the ceiling starts at that point and then coming all the way along. Here at the back, I just need to decide where it's gonna come to. We've got some wiring coming through at this point, which will be hidden. Um, originally I was thinking that might be kind of come into the back of the cupboard and out, out the way but I don't know how close we can get to the, um, the end of the cupboard this end um, and then also we need to bear in mind that we've got the 12 mil ply supports running across the ceiling here um, and also here in the middle which will form some um, fixing points up into the van so it needs to basically come slightly past those um, and I need to then obviously bear in mind we're going to end with 12 mil ply this end 12 mil ply this end so I need to take that 24 mil off the total measurement um, when I'm building the frame out of the 2 by one wood. three identical pieces of this one by two um, to form the width of the frame so this one will run on the bottom and then for the top part I'm going to double up so I'm going to glue these two bits together um, and leave it overnight clamped together so they form uh, basically act as a single piece and the reason for doing that is because the way our ceiling is where we've got the 18 mil pine strips we need some extra thickness um, as this attaches up into the ceiling so that the cupboard doors don't um, hit the pine strips in the ceiling. So this just gives it a little bit of additional clearance. We can hang the doors a little bit lower um, so we get that clearance in. And once this is all kind of sanded and painted and everything, it will look like one piece and, and won't be a problem for the frame. So that's why we've done that. Um, the next step now is to work out how deep we want the, um, the frame of the cupboard. Um, and then we can build, we can cut the upright parts and start to assemble. <laughs> Now we've got the frame underway at the front of the upper cabinet. We've obviously cut our lengthways pieces. Uh, we now need to think about the uprights to, to make the frame out here. We need to work out how um, long they need to be to make sure that it's all level um, against the wall. Now obviously the ceiling is curving at this point, nothing in the van is true or um, square so you can't really get a reference point. So the way I'm going to do it is um, we'll be having a batten running along the back here like this um, down to about this point. So this forms the bottom of the frame we know on the van wall. So what I'll do is measure from the floor up to this point um, as one measurement then I'll measure from the floor up to where the frame's gonna actually be at the front here, and then work out the difference between the two and use that to um, determine the height of this frame at the front. So I'll do that now, and then we can then we can work out the uh, upright pieces, get them cut, ready to be uh, made tomorrow. <laughs>
we've got the front of the frame ready. We need to basically dry fit this in place so we can then build the, um, the rest of the frame from this. Um, so we're going to work out how far back from the edge of this ceiling slat we want to go so the doors don't overlap it or don't get too close to it or there's not a stupid gap so it's too far back um, and we also need to then um, look at where we want to fix into the roof which is basically here where there's the 12mm ply and over here right in the corner um, so we'll do that now get this in place and then we can make sure that we're aligned with the baton at the back um, and we can then start to cut the ply. So we cut the ply now for the base of the cupboard, so that's going to sit here. Now obviously, as we said many times, nothing in the van is true or square or level. So we need to work out now, not only where does the frame need to sit forwards and backwards to make sure it's the same distance from the wall, this end as the other end, but also the back of the um, plywood needs to be on the same height from the floor as the front here. So to do that, I don't know if you can see, I basically, I've measured the distance between the bottom of this frame to the floor, marked it on the wall at the back here as well, and drawn um, a pencil line at the top here, which will be, which is our level basically on the wall here. It's confusing because the, the gap between these two bits of ply isn't the same level, so it's, I've got to ignore that. Um, and then what we, that means we can do is use our other bit of one by two, which is going to form the back of the frame along here. Use that pencil line to line that up, and then the plywood will then screw straight into the bottom of the front of the frame and that back piece there and it should be nice and level so hopefully that makes sense we're going to give it a go we might need some tweaking but we've got to start somewhere so that's our approach for now okay so thanks to these clamps we can now see the cupboard starting to take shape we're there with the ply underneath and there we go <laughs> and uh, yeah it's nice it gives us a sense of uh, how much space we'll have in here as well um, so yeah this is the rear piece which is attached onto the ply at the back um, which will be not held nice and strong and then we will screw down probably pocket hole or something down to the ply below there um, and then the same here to attach the ply. I don't want any screw holes really visible going up, so we'll try and do it coming down, see how that works out. So the next stage now is to look at the uh, M pieces, which are gonna be fun because they need to conform to the curve of the ceiling, the back here, and then down the wall as well, and fit nice and square here. So that's gonna be fun. Um, and then once we've got that, we've got the final baton now, a fifth baton, which is gonna run along where the silver foil is, which has got some really heavy duty blocks in the back there. Um, and we can screw up into the back there to give it additional strength. So yeah, happy with this. Time to get the scribing pen out. Okay, the first thing to do when um, working out the shape for this bit of ply that's gonna come on the end here um, is to use a cardboard as a template. So I've cut out um, this square of cardboard or rectangle um, to the tallest part here at the front and the deepest part here at the bottom um, to get our actual maximum size for this piece of wood and then we can start to kind of um, work out the shape and start to scribe down to get it to the right size to fit in and then we can use it as our template so as a starting point obviously at this point I can uh, it kind of doesn't really go anywhere near the back so we need to try and get it as close as we can before we can start to do some of the more finer adjustments so I've just marked a point where the curve of this back corner happens I can get rid of that bit of cardboard and start to get it nearer and nearer so I'll, uh, I'll do that keep repeating keep checking and double checking um, until we get it as accurately as possible okay that was probably a bit more faffy than it needed to be but I'm um, uh, taking a cautious approach and fairly happy with where we're at so far so now I've got it to the point where okay it's overlapping the front here but actually it is um, 
it's square to the front there and underneath, don't know if you can see that, it's nearly square. So a few minor adjustments at the back, we can actually start to then get the um, scribing pencil and start to kind of be more fine with our adjustments to make it fit. So we'll do that now. It's obviously proud of the front here, but we've actually got an even um, depth there all the way along. So what we need to do is set our scribe tool, which is this trend easy scribe scribing tool to that, that thickness. So we can just scroll that open to make it as thick as that, which is there. And then we need to, we know we need to take that much um, thickness or depth off the back. Um, to the shape of the wall at the back. So then we can use this and we run it up the wall to mark onto the cardboard where we need to cut. After much faffing, um, I've got a pretty good fit along the back there and the ceiling and into this bit, I need to do a few little tweaks. But what I'm gonna do is, as you can see at the front here, it's just slightly out at the top there, level at the bottom and same underneath. So I'm just gonna mark where that is so I can cut along there to make it square on the front and underneath. And then that is our template for the right hand side. So there we have the finished cardboard template. Well, version one of that. Um, I'm really happy with it. Hopefully you can see how it fits quite nicely there. Now there's a couple of areas where I want to tweak it. So up here in the corner, you can see some light coming through there. I think we can make that a little bit tighter up into the corner there. And then at the bottom here, again, hopefully you can see that. Um, there's a little bit of a gap, it doesn't quite go far enough back to the wall there. Um, so what I'm going to do is use this one to trace onto another bit of cardboard, make notes where I need to kind of have more cardboard or less or whatever for minor tweaks, recut it um, and then that should be spot on. Right now I've got my template um, cut out of cardboard, I can trace around it onto the ply and then cut that out. Um, and that should then fit in exactly as we need it to be. Final little trim later. I think we are good. There's a bit of play in that. If I push that back against the carpet, we're good. Underneath is a little tight, but it'll shift up. Um, I don't want to kind of do any more minor cuts on this because it's actually quite a decent finish on it. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That's the right hand side piece in. I can now test this on the other side to see how different it is. Um, ideally we can kind of use this as a base with a few minor tweaks, get the second one done, and then we can do the middle divider um, and start to assemble it. We're gonna have one middle divider here. So I've basically taken the template that I used at the ends, um, chopped out notches for the relevant um, battens that run across um, and just testing that on the halfway line which I've marked here um, for some reason it's just a little bit of a gap at the top so I just need to make a make that a bit taller at the top um, but uh, yeah so it shouldn't be too bad cut that and then work out how best to attach that to bring some rigidity to the frame Okay, so that's probably a bit tighter than I want. I think just needs a little bit of a edge off here. Um, but overall, it's pretty neat fit there. Um, happy with that. We'll obviously have a, a piece in front of this to edge that off. Um, so that's cool. So I've done the right one, left one, and the middle one now. So I think the next thing to do is the piece that's gonna run along the back, along here, um, I need to notch out of each of the uprights so that, that can then be part of the structure. Then I can take it all down, put it all together, sand it and paint it. So the last piece of the puzzle on the upper cabinet is the uh, button that's gonna run along the back here at an angle. Now, I don't know if you remember from our wall battening video, I put some, I think they're two by fours or something, huge, uh, fairly chunky bits of, or battens of wood up here um, with the intention that the um, additional one by two button in the cupboard will 
ultimately be our main fixing point up to here because we can put as many screws as we want in there because it's not seen and it's really thick wood. So um, I've cut this fifth piece um, of one by two here, which is gonna go up the top, um, as I say, fitted into here. So I need to dry fit that first so I can get it all positioned. I can then mark on the end panels where it meets them so I know where that's gonna attach. And also then I know on the middle panel where I need to notch out to incorporate the middle dividing panel into this um, baton here. So I'm gonna just line it up and um, dry fit it to start with. Okay, so this is probably uh, harder work than I, it needed to be, but um, I finished the initial assembly here. So um, as is our motto, belt and braces approach, um, I screwed the um, frame into the bottom plywood using countersunk screws. Now, annoyingly, 30 mil screws were too long and would potentially poke out the end. 25 were too short, so it's not the best, but I've um, put some 25 mil brad nails in um, which seemed to be doing the job and also that was glued along there. Um, sides again, same thing. These are nailed and glued in and I've also included some of these little um, corner brackets as well just for extra security. Um, this angle piece along the back, pocket hole, screwed into the ply at the end, this end and that end. Um, I will also be attaching it to the point in the middle but I'll probably after I've fitted it because I want, this might need a bit of flexibility depending on my measurements not that I'm not confident and then along this joint which is basically ply and ply um, 12 mil I wanted to keep it completely clean on the outside there so no sort of screw marks or anything so I basically pocket hold in a little piece there um, and then um, nailed it through to the piece of ply below so it feels uh, nice and sturdy hopefully it'll be okay but um, and it certainly looks like an upper cupboard. cupboard. So I'm pleased with that. Um, so I think the next stage we'll take it back in the van and just make sure it fits as intended. Then I can uh, start sanding it and prepping the wood um, ready for painting. fits yeah and even that um the back piece is up against the uh the wall there so um i kind of 
quite excited about this. This is probably my, yeah, maybe the biggest achievement in the van, the first piece of furniture. Um, yeah, really pleased with that. So there we go, one upper cabinet, the frame anyway. Oops. Um, obviously the doors are the next part to kind of measure and get right, but we'll uh, think about that another day. Um, yeah, good. The upper cabinet on this side, basically the same build technique um, we're going to use. The slight complication on this side is we want the cabinet to basically run out to about here, um, which means it's going to kind of overhang the door. So as well as obviously doing the frame and the side panels, we also need to think about what we're going to do at the back here, how we're going to cut around these parts near the door and all of that um, in order to provide the kind of fixing support. Um, I've already cut the first band. Which will run, which will fix up here to give it the, the the support and to help that I have got a little extra block this end um, to screw into as well as the main one here and, and on there so it kind of bridges that gap so um, so yeah so what I'm going to do the same as the last one really build the front frame make sure we've got the depth right cut out the ply for the base um, and then build the ends and then and then we need to just consider like I say what's going to go on behind here um, to make that all neat and tidy. So I'm on to the tricky bit. I've done the um, end piece at the other end, which is nice and easy. I just It was exactly the same as the uh, other side, thankfully, so I could just use this template. Um, here, we need it to be exactly the same in terms of um, the shape of it, but obviously there's no back wall at this point in the door where it comes out. So if I put this up into place, we can see, hopefully you can see this, this jutty out bit here needs to be cut out of this piece so it, it can sit back um, against, and then line up at the front here. Um, the other thing to we need to think about is like this back edge here is going to have a bit of wood, a false back basically up to it like that. Um, so when you look from the outside, it's the back you know you don't see into the cupboard. Um, so what I'm going to do is just square off this edge as well, straighten that off. Um, so it's just easier in the uh, the next stages. So um, what I'm going to do now is try and work out or well, template this part, this shape, and then work out how to map it onto the wood, cut it out, and hopefully it'll all be in the right place. I'm really pleased with that actually. It's uh, it fits quite nicely, perfect actually. Um, we're probably going to do some boxing in around here, so like this edge won't be seen or up here won't be seen. Um, but yeah, no, this is good. Pleased with this. So uh, final part now is the middle one, which should be okay. So just copying the template for the M1 um, and taking some notches out for the the buttons that are going to run through it, um, and then look at the ones that run across the wall there the button at the angle at the top, and then build it. So the final thing to do really over here is to try and work out how to fill that gap there. Because obviously we don't want to be seeing into the cupboard from here. So um, yeah, I just need to measure basically a rectangle and then scribe that because I don't know if you can see in there actually, if I come this side, we need to scribe it to the shape of that um, curve there and then we can attach it, it'll overlap this side um, and that will be this one complete and we can paint.
Now to think about the cupboard doors for the upper cabinets. So we're gonna use 18 mil ply um, to make them nice and chunky and heavy. And we're gonna use concealed hinges. So there's all sorts of these available. Um, these ones are Bloom, I think. I'll put details in the description, but basically there are two parts. There's the, um, this part goes onto the cupboard itself at the top, where you wanna open them from. Then the hinge part, this recesses into the wood of the cupboard door and then when it's closed they're soft closed so nice smooth movement this clips into here and holds it all together and then the door opens that way um, just to show you this briefly I'll go into more detail in a bit when I actually measure out the uh, the doors we're going to use but ultimately you have your recess in the cupboard door this sits in like that and then when it's closed as you can see that whole thing is concealed in the top of the frame and the cupboard door you won't see any hinges or anything like that so they're really cool they've got soft clothes on them as well which um, you can turn on and off if you want to don't know why you wouldn't want it um, and that helps obviously a nice smooth close and it also gives it a little bit of strength and it to stay shut the other thing i bought was this um, jig for drilling the recessed holes um, that i just showed you so you get this um, template which you, you can uh, position on the wood where you want to drill the recess um, you can twist these little knobs here to determine how far from the edge of the door the recessed hole will be. Um, so I'm going for about three mil, I think. More on that in a minute. And then you also get the uh, the drill bit there that will drill into the door. That fits into the jig like that. And then you're going to get your hole in exactly the right place. You've also got a collar on here. So it goes down just enough. I think it's 15 mil. And bear in mind, these are 18 mil doors. You definitely don't want it to go any more than that. So what I'm going to do first of all is do a mock-up on a thin strip of, uh, well, this basically, a longer strip like this. So the width of the, the uh, cover door will actually be, but it's 18 mil pine. I'm going to measure where I want the hinges. I'm going to drill them in the place where I think I want them, attach it to the cabinet, see what that's look, that looks like. If they're in the right place, if it shuts okay, if everything lines up, then I can use that as a template for drilling on the cupboard doors, which I don't want to make a mistake on. So we'll start with that now, then we'll move on and cut the cupboard doors, um, and then finally drill into those and dry fit those, make sure that all works before we get painting. So here we have our um, mock cupboard door in place. So like I say, I've cut this piece of wood, it's as thick as the uh, ply, so it's 18 mil thick. I've cut it to the width exactly that we're gonna want the main cupboard door, which is obviously gonna come down to here. And then I've, decided based on the settings on the jig to go for three mil from the top to for the hole to be for the hinge to uh, to fit into the reason for that is obviously you can go up to I think eight mil which means the holes lower which means the whole door sits higher if that makes sense but obviously we need to clear the um, ceiling make sure it opens as far to 90 degrees as possible so i needed to keep that distance quite small so three mil is the minimum um, and then so i drilled those in place halfway um, in the gap here, so sort of, well, third, two thirds, uh, to make it even, and then screwed them into place, and it all seems to be working okay. So if I open that, you can see the hinges here. Um, so again, reset, recessed there, three mil at that point, which is the closest you can get to the top of the door. And then these ones luckily um, just fit on the very back of the frame. Um, they've also got four-way adjustment, so you can adjust, use these screws to adjust left and right, these ones to adjust up and down, and also forward and back, so there's a bit of uh, flexibility there. But yeah, I'm really happy with these, so what I can do is basically keep the frame fittings in place, unclip these, and then on the real door, I know exactly where to put this, which means it will come back, clip straight back in, and um, fit perfectly. That's the plan anyway. Um, I'm sure it's not going to be that easy, but uh, we'll give it a go. This is the outside edge towards the cab. Um, and this will be the outside edge towards the cab, so I'll just make sure that's the right way around. So what I can do now, and I know where my center point is of this particular, for this hinge, which I can mark on here, and the same for this one here. So we're all good there. And 
just use this really fine screwdriver just So overall I think we're pretty good with this door. Um, it just needs to go back towards the frame this side, so what I can do is open it, like so, and then adjust on, oops, oh yeah, just tighten them up first. Let's test that again. So yeah, we'll adjust this one here. Just pulls it front to back. Yeah, that's a lot better. Cool. There's a bit of an overlap this end, so really the final adjustment is gonna only be possible once I get the second cupboard on. Because obviously the most important thing is that those all line up to each other. So yeah, I'm happy with this for now. The technique works, the hinges are in the right place. The cupboard doors look pretty cool. And they're gonna open okay as well. Well, it's in terms of height, actually nearly 90 degrees. Obviously with, with a handle, it'll be a bit, bit different maybe, but yeah, overall, nice soft close as well. So I think I'll wrap up part one of the other cabinets build video here. We've got our cabinets assembled, sanded, filled and ready for painting. Um, I've just fitted this rear little piece here which is the bit for when you open the sliding door, the back of this particular cupboard so that um, glued in place with some uh, nail guns in just to give it a little bit more security so I just need to do a bit of filling around there and then the doors obviously we sanded, um, just need to fill some of the ply around the edges um, in a minute. Then the next video will look at how we prime and then attempt to paint these with a really nice finish um, to make sure they look as good as possible. Not really looking forward to that, but we'll see. Need to do a bit of research and some, into some paint um, and different techniques first of all. And then we'll obviously fit the doors onto them, um, some gas struts as well so the doors will stay open and then fit them into the van. That's all in the next video, which will be coming soon. If you found this one useful or interesting, then please consider giving it the thumbs up or and or subscribing to our channel um, to keep up to date with the latest build videos as and when they are released here on YouTube and also over on Instagram at our van plan and we'll see you in the next video.